The crypto markets are a real bloodbath today. What's going on and what should we expect on this probably really volatile week? Welcome to Crypto Simulation Theory. I'm the Gaussian Snick. If you like the content from this channel, be sure to subscribe and like the video and also join my free Telegram group at Snake Pit. Let's go ahead and get started. This is Bitcoin on the weekly time frame, and if you've been following my videos, I've been talking about this red zone forever between 45 and 50,000 that I felt Bitcoin was destined for after it reached its high of 73.5K. And this was simply based off of volume support. Um, and if I turn on the BRVP right now, I guess this is probably not going to show it very well because of the data that I have pulled up. I need to get the correct data. Let's get the range from here to here. From the top in 2020, late 2021 to where we are now, um, you can see that one of the areas of major volume support is right just north of 45K. And so that's kind of why I put this zone here. Um, it is possible to go lower. We could go to the Gaussian channel, the median line, and still be in a technical bull market. But you see this big bar right here. I think <coughs> this is sort of a stopping point. I don't think Bitcoin's going to go below 45K in any kind of sustainable way. I mean, anything could happen on a wick, of course. But uh, this is not something that I'm really like counting on necessarily. So, um, yeah, when I look at the BRVP, I think, sure, it's likely we do enter into this red zone. I don't think the correction is over yet. Um, that, that doesn't mean we can't get a bounce, of course. That's, we certainly could get a bounce. In fact, if I pull up, um, let's uh, pull up some whole moving averages here to see, you know, if there's anything kind of interesting. You know, one of the things that does concern me a little bit is this incoming 50 HMA with the 100 week HMA in white. It looks like we're about to get a death cross on that. That is not really a good thing. Um, we have had death crosses before. Uh, this would be an example in December of 2019, we had a death cross and some of the worst of Bitcoin's drop, of course, before this crazy drop, which was a black swan, um, happened after this or around this death cross. So, I mean, I think the bad news is we could still have some more downside. I don't think we'll have very much more downside in terms of like, I think 45 to 50K should prove to be a good stopping point. You can see we just kind of chopped around here for a while before really, you know, taking off in January of 2020, uh, only to plunge again, of course. Um, so I, th I think we could see something like this play out. It, you know, history doesn't repeat, but it does often rhyme. Um, and so we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. But this looks like an incoming death cross uh, right there. If we pull up some of the other HMAs, let's pull up the 200 week HMA, you can see we wicked right down to it. That is incredible, right? And we've talked about this, you know, go back to any of my videos, you'll see, I've been talking about this for a while. So we have wicked right down to the 200 week. Um, it's kind of hard to imagine it going much below that on anything other than a wick. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll have to see this, this, we wicked into the red zone and uh, we certainly could spend more time in there, but um, Let's see if there's any indications that we might be getting a bounce soon. So for that, what I'm going to do is pull up the Snapple RSI. That's one of the most useful indicators for trying to see if we're you know, due for a bounce or maybe some more downside. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And yeah, I mean, there's still room to move down, right? Like in double bottom or something like that. Uh, if we go back to the 2019 drop, I mean, we even went below. The 20 line so that could happen here um I, I do think more downside could be in the cards you know i i just i just do i mean this does not look very good let's let's i'm sure the stochastic rsi looks terrible too um i can pull that up it's probably pretty much bottoming out yeah i mean look it's turning back down that's generally not a good thing i mean we did have a double bottom on it but you know we're coming back in so I don't know. I mean, this is going to be a pretty crazy week and we have to see if the Fed, you know, Federal Reserve is going to hold maybe an emergency meeting uh, after what happened in Japan. And uh, that has collateral effects throughout the rest of the world, including us. Bank of England's already cut rates. Uh, Bank of Japan raised rates, which was um, not great. We had the reverse carry trade um, didn't go so well. And we have potential war 
um, taking place soon, right? So this is just geopolitical events, right? So um, that kind of pressure is not good for the markets. Markets do not like uncertainty, as we know very well. So let's see what else we could possibly pull up to get some clues as to what might be going on. The average sentiment oscillator would be a good place to look. You could see a bit of a goldfish pattern forming here with bearish divergence. The bears are winning on the weekly. In fact, the bears haven't been this high since October of 2023 um, when they finally started to reverse course. If we go back to 2019, um, we can see there was a period where the bears really took charge um, and then they took charge again um, towards the end of the year. So, so there, you know, there were times and then you look here's uh, the summer lull of 2021. This was the full on bear market. Um, we had a little bit of bearishness uh, late in 2023, August, September timeframe. And here, you know, it's coming again, uh, not too far off of the same time frame about a year later. So, um, Probably more pain in store, honestly. I, I don't think a bounce is, you know, maybe a bounce on the daily or something. We could see some some relief rallies there on the daily time frame, but I don't really concern myself with the day to day. I'm much more interested in what's going on on the weekly and higher time frames because, you know, things can reverse. Bull bear power trend um, for the first time in a long time, looks like since april of 2023 the signal line or the, the median line is actually heading down um, it's crossed under the bullish signal line and so we're likely to be printing some red here again that's bearish i'm just not seeing anything bullish at the moment for bitcoin um let's see if there's anything else to look at here the waveform would be a nice one to look at oh well i just accidentally pulled up the mrv the vrvz score so we might as well look at it not looking great and i'm sure if we go back to 2019 we see something similar playing out you know 2019 2020 you can see 2019 uh it got really undervalued we tried to get back up to it in early 2019 fell below it for quite a while it actually took about a year to come back up now this is not going to play out exactly the same way um but it could be a little while before markets turn around i mean I'm waiting for rate cuts, honestly. That's that's what I'm waiting for. And I don't think the markets are going to do anything exciting until we get rate cuts. Um, the big question, too, is uh, will the rate cuts be enough to avoid the economy going south? Um, I mean, that remains to be seen. So I don't want to make any assumptions. I think we're still going to get a bull market. I think we're still in a bull market. I just feel like this is a lot rougher than what we're used to seeing. And, um, yeah, I mean, let, let's go to the waveform analysis. I did want to look at that. So the wave trend oscillator, um, this is something that hit three red dots, formed a head and shoulders pattern. And now the signal line is bearish and right on the threshold of the zero line. We have not been below the zero line since August and September of 2023. Um, and if we again go back to 2019, you know, and look at kind of what happened there, because, I mean, honestly, we don't have a lot of points compared to. Let's see. So in 2019. Uh, we got a big boost up to here, and then we came all the way down to like the minus 40 level. I, I don't know that we'll get down to the minus 40 level, but I do think we will hit the negatives. I, I definitely think we're going to dip. And you can see here, July 2022, I don't think we're going down to print a green dot or anything like that. But I think we could definitely find ourselves somewhere between negative 40 and negative 20 on the waveform, um, which, you know, it's going to be rough. And I have mentioned on the channel that, that I was expecting a quick and sudden drop. And let me explain what my logic behind that was. Just if you've been following me for any amount of time, you uh, have heard me kind of caution against this. So I'm going to pull up the two week time frame, which is actually my favorite time frame to analyze Bitcoin on. Wow, look at that nasty, nasty candle. And it's one of the nastiest two week candles, really. That That's kind of reminiscent of the the candle that got us into the summer lull back in 2021, isn't it? So I'm going to pull up the um, what I call the price momentum oscillators because it's 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 technically the CT reverse chandy. I don't even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> I've just been calling it the price momentum oscillator. My apologies to the creator. We are almost at zero on the uh, price momentum oscillator. We are pretty, you know, we've got some pretty nice red here. But what I what I want to point out, you know, we can actually turn the chart off for a minute. 
And I know this, if you've been watching my channel for a while, this is kind of, you know, maybe a little bit repetitive, but the last time we achieved levels as high as we did um, right here, right? So this was a level, let me put on the crosshairs. This was um, in February, 2024, price momentum maxed out around 98. I mean, the last time that happened was in March of 2013, almost 11 years ago. It's never been that high before. And when that happened, we had a nice drop. We had a drop down to the 26 level and then even a lower low at 21.28 before we bounced back up and put in a November top. Um, the market was more volatile back then and a lot faster moving than it is now. Um, if you look at the summer lull of 2021, I mean, it, it barely registers on here. You know, when we went into that lull, in fact, we were already had a neg negative signal line you know, April 2021, boom, we dropped down. So the move we just had is actually more similar to what got us into the summer lull than it is over here. But then you combine us hitting this like major top. So this is a very, very steep drop. It is a little concerning how far down it's going and how steep it's going. Um, you know, I, I do expect a bounce to occur at some point soon. And how dramatic that bounce really is i think will depend on the fed's ability to prevent a recession which honestly i don't know if if they're going to be able to pull it off like i i was definitely feeling a lot more confident until today um you know i do feel we're in you know a, a secondary scare of sorts i mean uh, our, our portfolios are absolutely getting destroyed right now um there's just a lot of geopolitical and macroeconomic uncertainty. The SOM rule triggered. For those of you who are not familiar with the SOM rule, we did trigger it, which is one of our recession indicators. Uh, unemployment went to 4.3%. So everything is kind of heading in the wrong direction. I talked about this in, in I think, my last video. So um, this is concerning if we put in a lower low. Um, it, it would be a bit concerning. This is the previous low from September of 2023 at negative 12 i think it's very likely we bounce before we do that i mean if we start coming down here folks that's getting into like bear market territory so i think it's important for us to hold like forty five thousand dollars uh wicking the 42 would not be the worst thing in the world as long as we gobble that up pretty quickly but i think 45k is kind of my line in the sand to make sure we're still in the bull market um I don't, I don't, uh, I don't want to, you know, a triple top cycle would be a very bearish outcome. And so I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to prognosticate. I still think we're in a bull market. I think that we're getting scared out of it. We have an election coming up in two months. Federal, I think the Federal Reserve is going to hold an emergency meeting and they're going to do something, especially with the carnage that's been going on in the stock market. I know it's, you know, um, the stock market doesn't open. For like another hour and i i probably won't be you know making this video for that long but um if we pull up the s p you can see it's you know it's been dropping too right week by week and it's a pretty significant drop and i i imagine monday is going to open up pretty bloody for the stock market um I, I can't see how it wouldn't given everything that's happened i know the after hour stuff did not look very good so um yeah, what can I say? I just think Bitcoin has more downside and $45,000 to me is a crucial level to hold to maintain the structure of the bull market. Uh, if we look at Bitcoin dominance, let me turn this off. Um, dominance actually made it to 58% today. And right now it looks like it has a bullish hammer candle, almost a dragonfly doji, which is extremely bullish. Um, not surprising to see Bitcoin dominance doing really well when the markets risk off that is exactly what you would expect but i still believe you know despite this bullish action from from bitcoin dominance you know i still feel like the end is near you know like the end the end has to be near i mean we could we could get up back up to 58 percent. we could even go up to 60 percent um but the Gaussian channel is still concave down, still opening up. This is not a very impressive move to the upside. If we turn on some of the indicators, uh, whole moving average at 50, we're above it. We're also above the 100. Okay, so that's pretty bullish. And it looks like we're potentially going to have a golden cross here. So we need to watch that closely. That would, uh, 
you know, that would be pretty bullish for Bitcoin dominance. I don't want to see a golden cross here. But um, the market obviously doesn't care what I want to see. This is terrible for altcoins. Um, and so I think, you know, if the Fed cuts rates, if they do an emergency rate cut, which I'm not sure if they will, I would hope they will, but they might not. Um, and the bull market still survives one way or the other. I think that Bitcoin dominance will still likely go up for a little while longer while Bitcoin recovers. Um, I don't know if it's just going to chop sideways or exactly what it's going to do. You know, this yellow line I drew is not really something you should take to the bank because I mean, it's just a trend line and trend lines, this is a weak trend line. If we're looking at horizontal support for Bitcoin dominance, there's, let's put the BRVP on and you can see, I mean, I hate, I hate to say this and I hate to like, this, this would really suck, but it could happen. So we might as well acknowledge it. I've been bearish on Bitcoin dominance, like, you know, kind of towards the end of the year, but bullish on it in the short term. In the short term, how high could it go? I mean, we really just turn on the VRVP and it doesn't look very promising, does it? There's nothing but error between 57.15% and roughly 60%. So honestly, if we get above, if we can get it like above 58 in a sustainable way, we could rock it up to 60 pretty quickly. Um, credit to Ben Cowan from Into the Cryptoverse for calling for 60% dominance for the longest time. And sticking to his guns. I mean, credit where credit is due. You know, there's there's reason to believe we could get up here and hit resistance around 60. Um, I, I've, said my, I've said that myself on my channel. Well, I thought that 58% to 68, I think I've said like 58% was kind of my upside target and we've already hit that. So I think I'm probably wrong. I, I did say we could, we could see 60%. Um, above that, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 so I think, you know, Bitcoin dominance has been moving very slowly. Uh, I don't really think it would go much higher than 60, but let's keep an eye on this Gaussian channel. Let's just, let's just see what happens. Not good for the altcoin market. Speaking of the altcoin market, uh, let's look at ETH Bitcoin. So, and I'll turn off the BRVP on that. I don't really need it. Yeah. ETH Bitcoin, uh, went right to my red zone. Um, and it, it just barely touched it. So I, I can at least say I think ETH Bitcoin is getting close to a you know to bottoming at this point, which uh, but but not bottomed yet. Now look now notice it's at 0.044. It did take out the previous low. Um, there's a lot of support for ETH Bitcoin between 0.03 and 0.04. I don't think it's going to go below this. Anything is possible, but I just don't think so. I think we're getting close to bottoming for ETH Bitcoin. Um, this will be a tailwind for Bitcoin dominance and a headwind for the altcoin market if Bitcoin continues to collapse, which I think is the likely outcome, at least um, until after rate cuts and Bitcoin has gone on to make a new high. That could take some time, folks. I like, like if the Fed were to cut rates tomorrow, I don't see Bitcoin going over um, its previous all time high for a little while. I, I think at the earliest quarter four, right? I think October, uh, also known as Pumptober. Uh, could be a very great month for Bitcoin. I think it's likely that quarter four will still be quite bullish and that we could take out Bitcoin's previous all-time high in quarter four of this year. But we're not in quarter four, we're in quarter three and it has just been a bloodbath. So um, not too happy with ETH Bitcoin at the moment. If we look at the altcoin market and I only really care about its valuation against Bitcoin because it, you know, if you're not outperforming Bitcoin, why are you holding it? Um, is total three minus USDT divided by Bitcoin. It's not looking good either. So the Gaussian channel got fat and wide, looked like it was about to go green. Unfortunately, I, yeah, I don't think this, this is going to do very great things. Um, you know, if we pull up a VRVP on, I don't know if, it, if we'll have enough. Yeah, we got data. We're unfortunately now turning what was formerly support into resistance. The next level down where there's, Brick wall support is right around here. Let's draw like a horizontal line. So I could draw like a red zone. I haven't drawn a red zone. Let me draw it. Um, sorry, if you see my head moving around, I've got a whole new setup for my videos, which I hope you're enjoying. I got a camera and microphone because my videos have just been very hard to um, maybe watch at times because of the quality. And, you know, I think 
now hopefully is better. Let me know in the comments if you like my new format. Um, and you can hear me more clearly and see me more clearly because that's kind of the whole point. Anyways, um, I think a good red zone to probably draw would be right here. Okay, and, and I haven't drawn this before. I, I don't think we would go below this level for all coins against Bitcoin. But I think if I had to draw out a path, right, for the altcoin market against the Bitcoin market. And, you know, holding alts right now, by the way, is incredibly risky. I mean, I think it's okay to have a small percentage of your portfolio in alts. Um, if you have more than that, just understand you are taking on more risk and you are likely to be uh, very far down on your portfolio. If you can handle that, more power to you. I'm not going to criticize your strategy, whatever it is, but just be aware that more pain is likely to come. So I think the altcoin market is not going to do very well in quarter three. I think it will probably will hunt for a bottom, just like ETH Bitcoin is hunting for a bottom. And I don't know when rate cuts are going to happen. Rate cuts are going to be initially bearish. Remember that if the Fed cuts rates, it's admitting that the it's admitting to us, yeah, the economy is is screwed. So um, I mean, you know, and then they could put a Band-Aid on a, on a, you know, carotid artery that's gushing out blood. So, uh, we'll enjoy the pump while it lasts. I, I mean, I have to imagine there'd be some kind of bounce maybe here, right? And, and I think it'd probably be a lower high, if I had to guess, maybe finding resistance here. And then I think the altcoin market is still going to bleed against Bitcoin in, in quarter four. Um, I think it may find a bottom in quarter four and it could start to pump towards the end of quarter four. So maybe, you know, this is 2025. I think 2025 is going to be a great year for all coins. And I think that I think we'll see some kind of mega pump um, in 2025. But something like that might happen. So you've got to just exercise a lot of patience with your altcoins. Now, remember, this is total three divided by Bitcoin taking out stable coins. So this this means if Bitcoin goes up, guys, your altcoin prices are going to go up, too. Um, and it feels better than watching them go down, right? But Bitcoin will probably still be outperforming them until Bitcoin puts in a new all-time high, whatever that is. So this is, you know, and this of course is the best case scenario, assuming we don't plunge into a recession right now or a global depression. I have to at least acknowledge the risk. It would be arrogant of me to not at least acknowledge that the bull market could be over. Um, I don't think that it is. Let me be clear about that. If I had, if I were a betting man, I would say that there's like a 95% chance that the uh, that the the bull market is going to commence and pick up steam in quarter four of this year, and, and we'll have a bull market in 2025. Um, but I have to at least acknowledge that there are factors that could plunge us to the depths. The market's factoring in all the bad news right now, so it just depends on what happens this week. Is there more bad news, or does the Fed come out and say, "Hey guys, we're going to fix this"? And we get some reassurance. And I think the markets are going to like that. But I still don't I don't think it'll affect the trajectory of total three divided by Bitcoin. I still think total three divided by Bitcoin is going to have a rough quarter three and maybe even a rough beginning of quarter four before we see uh, altcoin year. I think 2025 will be remembered as an altcoin year, certainly not 2024. So those are kind of my thoughts on the altcoin market. I mean, there's really not much, much else to say. I think that pretty much covers it for today. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, it's a tough time, folks. If there are any issues with the sound or video, let me know those in the comments as well. Be sure to join my free Telegram group, The Snake Pit. Um, got some great you know, content in there. I do weekly or daily chart updates, market updates, and we have a great community of people just like you and me who love to talk crypto. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Sure to subscribe to this. Uh, channel hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of uh, future videos like this one other than that i wish you all the best and i will see you again next time